Welcome to the Nicholas 11x12 technology. Today in this short video, I'd like to show you how to easily overclock your CPU as fast as possible using the traditional overclocking method by using the BIOS. Now before I move on, overclocking will void the warranty and can lead to a damaged CPU as well as a damaged motherboard if you do it incorrectly. Therefore overclock at your own risk. I should also let you know that different processor generations come with different technologies and special names. Also often you get completely different names for options in a BIOS when comparing an Intel platform with an AMD one. In my case I'll be showing you how to overclock an Intel Core i7 4770K. This CPU belongs to the Haswell generation which are a lot easier to overclock for beginners. By that I mean you pretty much can leave all the energy saving features on and just increase the multiplier and voltage. Next up you should know whether your processor has an unlocked multiplier or not. If you aren't sure, just check the specifications. The i7-4770K is unlocked, so there's no problem here. Then you also need a good motherboard to achieve good, solid and stable results. First of all, make sure you're using a motherboard with the correct chipset that actually allows overclocking. I'm using the MSI Z97 Gaming 7 board, which makes use of Intel's flagship chipset model Z97. Motherboard manufacturers sometimes allow overclocking with lower chipset models, but I wouldn't rely on that too much. The chipset is very important, but of course the correct chipset alone won't guarantee good overclocks. Therefore you need a high quality motherboard with a good face power design and some good VRM cooling. My motherboard features a 12 face power design as well as sufficient VRM heatsinks. When overclocking you mostly have to increase the CPU voltage, which leads to higher temperatures. Therefore never ever use the stock cooler of your processor to overclock. Instead go for a good aftermarket CPU cooler. Air coolers are cheaper but take up a lot of space in your system and can block a RAM slot or two. Besides such air coolers can be fairly loud at times. The second option is going for a water cooler, but it's a more expensive option. In my case I'll be using a closed loop all-in-one water cooler, the Corsair H105. Also make sure to apply good thermal paste on your processor. Alright, we can now move on to overclocking. Oh and before you overclock, stress test your new hardware to make sure it's not defect in the first place, because afterwards analyzing the problems that may occur may turn out to be more difficult. Now that that's aside, reboot your system and get into the BIOS. In my case I have to press the delete key on my keyboard. First I'd save a profile for the settings on stock, so you can easily revert back to them if something goes wrong. This can save time. Now find the overclocking settings. Every motherboard has these somewhere else. You'll need two main settings here, the multiplier and the vCore or also known as CPU voltage. I'd recommend increasing all these values in small steps. A 100 MHz increase is good enough for the CPU clock. If you're a bit more advanced and have experience on what your processor's CPU clock speed limit is, you could just as well type in the desired values in the multiplier section. I'm doing that because I already know my i7-4770K with this motherboard can only achieve 4.5 GHz at max without overdoing things with the CPU voltage. Next up we have to dial in some realistic voltage values. When overclocking in small steps make very small voltage increases like 0.05 volts. Then when you think that's enough voltage, save the settings in a BIOS and boot into Windows. I already know how much voltage I need for stable 4.5 GHz and therefore I know my system won't crash. But you have to be careful, the goal is to achieve the highest possible CPU clock speed with the lowest amount of voltage. Just because you actually can achieve high overclocks doesn't mean it's healthy for the CPU. There will be a certain voltage point that you have to look out for. Suddenly to achieve stability you'll see you need an extreme increase in voltage, but that's not good. Just stick with the healthy values and live with the lower clock speed. Not every motherboard overclocks is good and the same thing for the CPU. If your system doesn't even post anymore, it means you haven't even applied enough voltage to get past the post process. The next step could be the Windows boot screen. You could encounter a blue screen of death there as well if you didn't apply enough voltage. But if you manage to boot into Windows without any crashes, start up your temperature monitoring program for the CPU, start up CPU-Z to monitor the voltage and clock speeds and also start up your stress testing program, in my case ADA64. Always monitor the temperature, don't forget the temperature. 
If your system crashes in the middle of the test, go back into the BIOS and increase the voltage a little bit. Again, 0.05 volt increases are enough. If you don't encounter any crashes during 15 minutes of stress testing, your CPU is about stable. Please keep in mind though, your CPU could just as well crash on lower CPU loads. Therefore run lots of different programs, I like using Cinebench. Run these tests over and over again, and if everything's okay, your CPU most likely stable. However, to be on the sure side, you'll have to stress test your CPU for 3 to 48 hours non-stop. I personally don't like wasting that much power and prefer fine-tuning the settings in real life usage when I actually use my PC. Of course you'll have to expect a random crash here and there, just save off your work every minute or so. That of course is my method, the more energy saving way, but a bit more unsure. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope this quick video gave you a good idea on how to even start overclocking your CPU and what to do. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube. Also to support me and to make future videos possible, please disable your ad blocker. This is the best way to help me out. Thank you.